Okay, so today we are going to cover stress. We're going to start at least talking about stress. We might not get all the way through. Um, so stress. Uh, stress is a big thing for us to talk about um, throughout uh, really any time in life, but especially as college students. Um, stress is something that you are going to start experiencing if you haven't already. Uh, typically, if we were to ask uh, you guys if you're stressed, almost all of you would say that you have some stress in your life at some point or the other. You may be stressed currently, um, you may not be, but we know that uh, many, many people experience stress at some point throughout their life, um, usually multiple times through their life. And people use this term a lot of saying, ooh, I'm really stressed out and there are things are stressing me out. But at the end of the day, most people can't really define stress. They're not exactly sure what it is. Um, and so, it's really something hard and people don't really know what it means to be stressed and what's going on in the body. And so we're going to talk about that uh, today and talk about what stress is. Realize stress doesn't have to be something negative. Most people see it that way. Um, we, we, we think about stress in a negative way because that's typically when it's brought to our attention, but it doesn't always have to be negative. And so when we start talking about stress, stress isn't the easiest thing to define. Uh, there's lots of different ways to look at it, but at its most basic definition, stress is simply something that causes a reaction in the body, either physically or emotionally, so or mentally, emotionally or mentally. And so there are many things in our life that can recall, that can cause a reaction in the body uh, that that changes us physically or emotionally. It could be for a short term thing, it could be long term, it could be positive, it could be negative. And so this is what we're looking at with stress. Now, um, when we talk about stress, we can also sometimes refer to this thing called the fight or flight response. Uh, a lot of you guys may have heard of the fight or flight response. And this is um, typically thought about um, as something that we used to have to, that used to happen in our bodies and, and it still does. But a lot of people think about it back uh, when we were cavemen, cave women, almost thinking about that of if something was coming after us like an animal, uh, we had two options. We could either fight this animal to try to beat it, or we could run away from it to avoid the situation. When we talk about this fight or flight response, it's actually the exact same as the stress response in the body. Uh, so fight or flight, we're really talking about the stress response. Um, stress is typically thought of more about something uh, you know, modern day things you might worry about, like a test or things like that, where the fight or flight response is uh, kind of thinking back in our ancestry, how people respond to things, or if you're put in a life and death situation, these are your two options. Um, but really this fight and flight response is the same thing as the stress response. Um, and so if we look at that fight or flight response being something that um, really affected people more hundreds, thousands of years ago, think about caveman, cavewoman, well, it makes sense why it was something that was there. So with uh, someone in the fight or flight response, um, if we look at a caveman, cavewoman, what we have going on is that cave caveman, each and every day that he wakes up, his one and only goal for the day is, well, A, to stay alive and B, to find something to eat. And so if he goes and finds something to eat, um, and while he's out there, something in a bush beside him rattles, well, that's going to get his attention and start this fight or flight response. Uh, it would be very similar to if uh, the fire alarm went off in your house right now, or if you heard a gunshot outside of your house right now, this same fight or flight or stress response starts. And so you may have noticed some things that happen when this, this stress response starts, this fight or flight response starts. Most people uh, tend to realize that their heart rate goes up pretty quickly. Uh, you notice that your heart's beating through your chest, your chest, and this is a good thing. Um, whether you're, you're getting ready to run out of your house or let's say for that caveman, something jumps out of the bushes and let's say it's a velociraptor. You know, let's take a dinosaur days. Velociraptor jumps out and it's like, ah, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? We've all seen Jurassic Park, those velociraptors uh, kind of screaming at you. And so you've got this option. And so your body starts to respond to be able to deal with what's going on. And so heart rate goes up, getting you ready to move, either to run from this thing or to fight it. Um, you mo may notice that your palms get sweaty. Um, and if your palms are sweaty, it's not the fact that just your palms are sweating, but your entire body is, is sweating. And this is to keep you cool uh, so that you can continue to move and fight or run. 
you may notice that your vision uh, becomes kind of like tunnel vision where everything uh, in the peripheral uh, is blurred and you, you kind of only see what's straight in front of you. And this is really good because if you're fighting a velociraptor, you don't want to see berries in a tree. Or if you're running through the woods trying to get away from it, you don't want to care about a, a tasty squirrel up in a tree as you're running by because these things would, would lead to the end of your life. Um, if you've ever been in a, a bad car accident or you've ever seen someone that suffered a bad injury, you may look at them and say, oh, you look at their arm and you can clearly tell that it's broken. But that person who it happened to is saying, no, no, I'm fine. They look at it and they're like, oh, it, it doesn't hurt. It's fine. Well, there's a pain numbing response that comes with this fight or flight or stress response um, so that you can keep going even if there's an injury because it's trying to uh, save your life. And so um, you have all these things going on, and these are the fight or flight response things and the stress response, um, and they're, they're the exact same um, that we're dealing with them, whether it's a caveman fighting a velociraptor or you facing um, an exam or uh, some kind of virus or uh, losing your job or other things like that. It's all the same kind of response. And so we're, we're looking at this, and uh, these are good things to happen initially, but they can be bad, and we'll talk about what makes them them bad for us. Realize what happens in the fight or flight response or the stress response is your body is pulled out of something called homeostasis. And homeostasis is basically your, your resting mode. You're kind of, all of you right now are, are, should be in homeostasis. You're just sitting there calm. Your entire body is at equilibrium. It's not really having to fight too hard to keep you alive. When we are put in this fight or flight or stress response, our body's pulled out of homeostasis, having to work really hard to do all these things. And our body always wants to come back to homeostasis. Um, every moment of the day, your body's trying to get back to homeostasis if it's not in it. And extended periods out, outside of homeostasis can cause harm. So these are the things we have to look at. And so this is the general stress response that, that we, we talk about. And so I have a few questions for you guys as it relates to stress. The first one is, is in that stress response, is everyone the same? Is everyone the, does everyone have the exact same stress response, like the things that happen? What do you guys think? So the stress response itself is the same. The same things happen in every body, but what causes someone to stress out may be different. Some people may stress out about snakes, while other people may stress out about heights, while some stress out about money and others stress out about their jobs. Uh, some may stress about scrolling where others do not. So the response that actually happens is the same, but um, what causes that stress response or fight or flight response is a little bit different. Can we control that response? Do you guys think that we can control um, the response uh, to stress? Can we make it less or make it worse? So, so we, we can actually control that response to uh, stress. Uh, think about it. There are things that we are not stressed out about um, that we may become stressed out about. Or think about um, firefighters as an example. Uh, most people would get stressed being in a burning building, going into a burning building. But firefighters run into them head first to go inside. Um, and so through training, we can learn to control the stress response, to use it to benefit us, uh, to learn how to... Uh, bring ourselves out of this stress response if we don't need to be in it. Um, and so there are lots of people that kind of uh, do these things. Um, so we have that. Realize our personalities can affect our stress. Um, so think about kind of type A versus type B, and maybe you've never heard of that as personalities, but type A is kind of um, almost OCD. They want things done a certain way in a very a certain order, and they want things done um, exactly how they're supposed to be done, where a type B personality is kind of more go with the flow. They don't really care how something gets done as long as it gets done. And so when you look at that, we know that um, uh, type B personalities tend to stress a little bit less than type A because they don't care about how something gets done as long as it's done, where a type A personality, if it's not done in this specific order, in this specific way, it could cause them stress in their lives. And so you can be in between those. You can have some things in your life that are um, 
you know, you're very strict on and other things that are not, but those things that are more type A, more strict and how you want them done, the more likely it is that those would cause excess stress in your life. Um, additionally, we have sex. Sex can affect your, um, can affect your stress response or what we stress out about or how much we stress. Um, we're not talking about the activity here. We're talking male and female. Typically, we see that females stress more than males do. Uh, females stress more than males do. This is on average. This isn't across the board. Um, and it can be for a variety of different reasons. We don't exactly know. Um, it could have a little bit to do with hormones. Uh, males' hormones cycle every 12 to 24 hours, where females' uh, hormones are cycling about every 28 days. Um, and so this causes for a greater buildup of hormones, which, which may lead to some stress. Um, we can also, we know that some of the stress females see is through um, cultural expectations or what culture or society kind of um, says is the normal of what you should be doing. Um, I can wear the same exact kind of outfit day after day uh, and no one would really say a word or, or really think much of it. Um, whereas with females, um, there is an expectation that you're going to have wear different clothes a lot of the time. And that if you wear the same thing over and over and over again, people may say something or look at you differently. And where this may or may not be the case, this is the feeling for, for some females. Or we can talk about um, your responsibilities um, in society. And I'm putting that in giant quotations of, of kind of what people think is the role. And so when it comes to it, if we look at roles of people uh, back in the 1940s and 50s, uh, the role of a male of a household was to be the breadwinner, to go work and, and bring, make sure the family was provided for, uh, fix things around the house, maybe take the trash out, where a female's role was to, you know, be the at-home mom and cook and clean and take care of the kids. And again, I'm not saying those are right or wrong. I'm just saying what the expectations were. And so if we fast forward into 20, 2020 um, and we kind of try to figure out, okay, how do those look now? Well, the role for a male has not really changed much. Still to be the breadwinner, to have a job, to maybe fix some things around the house, take out the trash. Females still is to kind of take care of the household and cook and clean and those types of things is the expectation. But in addition to that, females are also now expected to be, um, to, to have jobs and have not only a job, but a su successful career and be these uh, women who do a lot of things in a career and that can put excess stress. That's a lot to expect of any one person. Um, and so this may be the case. And realize even if you don't, don't fit those norms, even if that's not the expectation on you, because those norms are out there, it still can actually, um, it can still actually cause stress in your life. So in my particular situation, my wife works and I work. Uh, but my job allows for a decent amount of flexibility in uh, when I work and, and when I get things done. So um, in our household, I actually cook and clean because I'm actually home before my wife is being able to work from home a little bit. And so I do those things, A, because I don't want her to have to worry when she gets home when I'm already home. And B, I kind of want to eat earlier than, than what it would be if I waited for her to get home. Um, but I do those things at our house and I'm fine with doing those. It's perfectly all right. But sometimes those cause that causes my wife to stress out because she feels like she's not being um, the most supportive wife because she's not doing these things, even though I don't care. And it's not the way our household is set up. So these things can definitely um, still have a role in that. And then finally, when it comes to this, um, we, um, we want to talk about experiences. Realize that our experiences, the things that we go through in life, can cause us to stress more or less about certain things. And so think about this when it comes to experience. Most people, uh, by the time you hit college, usually drive or, or have driven, have learned how to drive. And so think about the very first time you drove. The very first time you ever drove a car um, by yourself or maybe with your learner's permit was probably pretty stressful for most people. Um, it tends to be you get in that car and you close the door and you put the keys in the ignition and you buckle up and you check your mirrors 15 times. Uh, you start the car and you check your mirrors again. You start backing out of a driveway and you do it really, really slow and really cautiously. Um, you kind of turn out of the driveway and, and you get backed up and you start going down the road and the speed limit's maybe 35 miles an hour and you're doing like 15. Uh, you pull up to a stop sign 
and you're like 100 yards from the stop sign because you didn't want to get too close, you didn't want to run it, um, your palms are sweaty, your head's on a swivel, um, and then you, it takes you three, you know, it takes you 30 minutes to go around the block and then pull back into the driveway, and you put it in park, and you're like, whew, that was a, that was a good experience. Ooh, I'm glad I didn't wreck anything. Well, that experience was really, really stressful. And so what happened though is most of you over time, as you drove, you had positive experience after positive experience after positive experience, and you became more confident at driving and the stress level went down to such the last time you drove, maybe you didn't even uh, buckle up. Maybe you didn't even look at your mirrors. You, you barely looked at the road because you were watching something on, on Netflix the entire time you were driving. Um, and so you got more confident, which is, which is good. Um, but the other thing can be true as well if we talk about driving is it can also lead to more stress in your life depending on the experience you have. If you've ever been in a car accident, um, if you have, you would, a lot of people experience after they get in a car accident, they become a little bit more stressed out when they're driving, especially if they return to the area they got in the accident. So imagine an intersection, you got T-boned um, and your car flipped over and you went to the hospital and had some injuries and had some surgeries. Well, let's say six months goes by and, and you start driving and you get to that same intersection where you got hit the last time. Well, most people tend to have this stress response happen and their palms get sweaty, their heads on a swivel, they slow down, they're, they're looking for someone to hit them. Even though the odds of them getting hit in that spot again are very, very slim, their body knows the last time this happened, it wasn't good. And so it has this stress response being able to deal with it a little bit better. And so um, experiences can 100% affect this uh, stress response. So we've, we've kind of covered that. Are there any questions so far? Cool. So what we want to do now is we want to talk a little bit about the, the, the science behind this stress response. And so what we have is typically there are lots of ways we can talk about this stress response, but one of the most basic, the first ways that people looked at this stress response and talked about it and kind of applied some, some science theories and concepts to it is what we call the general adaptation syndrome or GAS. If you ever talk about stress again uh, throughout your life in, in a formal setting or in a school setting, you'll talk about this general adaptation syndrome or GAS. And so in this, it was one of the first ways we looked at stress and it divided stress into two uh, different categories. It divided it into EU stress and, and distress. These could also be referred to as good stress and bad stress. So EU stress being good stress and distress being bad stress. So there are stresses that we consider to be good stresses. Um, good stresses would be things like exercise, um, could be if you've ever competed in something, um, in any kind of competition at all, if you get butterflies before you compete, this would be considered good stress. Maybe stress, um, if I was handing you an exam right now, like was literally passing you an exam and you started to get a little like sweaty palms, that could be considered good stress. Um, bad stress would be things like um, stressing out about your job or money, typically uh, could be stressing out about schooling. Um, and so when you look at these things, you're like, well, how do we tell the difference? What's the difference between good stress and bad stress? Because some things could be good or bad, depending on, on, on what goes on. Well, typically what we see is good stresses last for a short period of time, maybe 30 minutes, a, a couple of hours even, where bad stress is lasting for days, weeks, months, even possibly years. So when you think about something in your life, how, much, uh, how, how long is it causing stress in your life? Exercise only lasts for maybe a couple of hours, so it's good stress. Stressing as uh, for a competition that lasts for an hour or two, good stress. Stressing right as you get handed an exam, like having that little bit of nervousness, right as you get handed an exam that, you know, might last 30 minutes to an hour, that'd be good stress. Stressing out about school every single day for the next two years, that's bad stress. Stressing about, out about money day after day or your job day after day over and over again would be bad stress. And the reason that these happen is explained through what we call the stages of stress, which is explained by the general adaptation syndrome. Um, and so it starts in the alarm stage. This is the very first thing. This is what grabs your attention. This is the fire alarm going off. This is the velociraptor rattling the bushes. The alarm stage is what grabs your attention and starts this stress response, this fight or flight response. From there, we, we very quickly move out of the alarm stage and we move into the resistance stage. 
And this is where we're actually facing, um, we're facing or ignoring uh, the stress. So if it's the Velociraptor, it's whether I'm either fighting or running from it. If it is my um, test, it's whether I'm taking that test or ignoring studying for that test or doing the competition or, or getting out of the situation that causes the stress. This is the resistance. This is kind of us putting up that fight. Good stresses end here. Good stresses end in the resistance stage. We either fight it or we get away from it and it's over. It's done with. We don't have to worry about it again. Um, so that Velociraptor, within, if I choose to fight it, it's going to be over in 10 minutes. If I choose to run from it, I've either survived or um, I've, gotten, I've gotten caught within about 10 minutes. Um, and so these things are resolved. And our bad stresses, the things that we can't really shake in the resistance stage, we may be trying to tackle it. Or what happens a lot of times with distresses, with bad stresses, is we, we ignore them. We don't do anything. We don't run from it. We don't try to get away from it. We don't actually tackle it head on. We just simply ignore it and pretend it's not there. And so our body is in this um, out of homeostasis for an extended period of time. And so if we're out of homeostasis for too long, this starts to lead um, us into the exhaustion stage, which happens in distress. And the exhaustion stage is where we start having physical and emotional issues arising from being out of homeostasis for too long, being in this stress response for too long. Um, the exhaustion stage um, can cause all different kinds of things from very minor things to maybe it's just some trouble sleeping to very major things of um, it can even lead to death. Realize that stress can actually kill you and that's how exhaustion was originally defined was as death, but we know that it can have much, um, we, it can have not such severe effects but last a lot longer and not cause death. And so these are what we're looking at for the general adaptation syndrome, good stress and bad stress and um, those stages of where we go. And so now that we've kind of have this, um, we want to talk about some of the things that cause stress. Like what are some of the things that are stresses in your life? So what are some things that cause stress in your life? You can tap them into the chat or uh, you guys can just unmute yourself, but what are some things that actually cause stress in your life? You tell me. Yeah, so work could definitely be that. What, what else could, could cause stress? Work can be stressful for sure. School, yeah, school could be. So um, there are lots of different things that can cause stress. And so when we look at all of these different things, um, we, uh, we can come down and we will talk about these sources of stress. And so really what, what we also wanna talk about is what do these things actually cause? So we will go back and, and cover that. I skipped a slide. Um, so with that, um, when it comes to our stress, we do wanna talk about some of the things that it affects in our body. Um, short term and long term, and then we'll go back to those things that um, cause stress in our lives. Um, so our immune system is affected with stress. So um, what's really cool is if, if we have good stress, this short term stress, um, this EU stress, our immune system is actually boosted. So when you actually stress and it goes away, like fighting the Velociraptor or um, exercising, your immune system gets stronger. Um, it actually is better able to fight off diseases and infections. Now, this doesn't, this doesn't make you invincible. You can still get sick, but we just know you're a little less likely um, to get sick because if you get your, um, you know, if you're fighting that velociraptor and he bites you and, and causes a cut, your body reacts by um, trying to make sure you don't develop an infection. But we know that very quickly, if that stress lasts too, lasts too long, so if it lasts for more than a few hours, your immune system actually becomes suppressed. And so if you've ever known someone with a lot of stress in their life, um, like you just know someone who's constantly stressed, it would not shock me if when you think about that person, they tend to be sick. Maybe not where they're having to go to the doctor, but those days where you don't feel good, um, if they have those every, um, you know, one or two of those days every week or two of where they just don't feel good. So we know the immune system's affected. We know that because um, stress pulls you out of homeostasis and your blood pressure and heart rate go up, uh, that you're more likely to suffer from heart attacks and develop cardiovascular disease. Um, many people, when they get stressed, it affects their stomach. Some people, when they get stressed, don't eat at all, while other people, when they get stressed, um, constantly eat. And neither one of these are, are super healthy. 
Um, stress can also cause headaches. There are stress headaches because of increased blood flow and pressure in, in that area. Uh, they can cause insomnia, which is where you have trouble sleeping. So do keep that in mind that, that stress can cause insomnia where you have trouble sleeping. And if you're not getting enough sleep, typically this doesn't help your stress. It can make you more stressed. Uh, you're more likely to get injured with increased amounts of stress, typically because you're not thinking about what you're doing and possibly not getting enough sleep. Um, so if, think about driving down the road. If you're sleepy and you're thinking about something besides driving, you're more likely to get into that accident. And we know that it can cause um, a host of psychological problems from anxiety and depression um, and other things uh, that come along with it. And so we want to consider this when we talk about all the things that can lead to stress in our lives. And so sources of stress um, are a lot of different things. One of the things that will cause the most stress in your life is what we call major life changes. Uh, major life changes typically don't happen all that frequently. Um, they shouldn't be super long periods of stress, but they can be. Uh, but these cause the most stress in your life. But, but thankfully, the, usually they're, they're not lasting uh, super long amounts of time, so they're not happening um, a lot at one time. If they are, this can be a big issue. And so major life changes would be um, uh, changing jobs, um, changing schools, uh, or careers. Um, if you've ever had to move, moving can be very stressful. Um, if you've ever had an addition or subtraction um, out of your life as far as people, so a death in the family can be really stressful, or adding someone like getting married or a child, or um, it could be even having a, a new parent come into to, to your life or a sibling. These things can add a lot of stress to your life, but again, typically they're for a small amount of time until they get used to them and then those go away. Or even making a big purchase. If you've ever had to buy a car or when you buy a house one day, um, you'll notice there's a lot of stress that goes along with that, especially in the, in the initial process. Um, now, those are our biggest sources of stress, but overall to our daily lives, they don't cause the most amount of stress when we look at it over the course of your life. Um, we would say that daily hassles are adding to your life, uh, more stress to your life and more of a concern because it happens day after day that there tend to be more of these negative stresses. And these could be things like traffic. Um, it could be um, uh, just different things in life that kind of frustrate you. Maybe um, having to deal with a, a certain particular thing or, or a certain place or um, you know, if you get stuck behind a school bus, daily, daily things that just maybe don't happen every day, uh, but they're just small things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis that can cause stress. Um, and so those are there. Um, in college, you guys um, have to deal with different stresses than some of the other uh, parts, uh, other people in different stages of life, but college students specifically have some stresses they deal with more than others. Um, these would be things like your academics. Other, other jobs, you don't have to necessarily deal with academics, but you guys care about those, and that can be stressful um, from the grades you're receiving because that matters on where you're going to um, trying to do well and set yourself up for success and, and achieve um, the degree you want. Um, college is also a time of stress interpersonally, so uh, the way we deal with people around us and in our, in our lives um, and those relationships is kind of what we're talking about because you deal with people teaching you and that's a different mentality than high school and the people in those classes and interacting with them uh, in group projects and having different people in all of those classes and still dealing with your old friends and new friends and your family members. Um, we also know that time tends to be a big issue for college students. Um, time is there because you're trying to do all of these things. Realize when it comes to time, one of the biggest things you're going to learn in college is time management. Uh, better than learning anything about health in this class or any of your other classes, most students, especially those that tend to become successful in college, learn how to manage their time appropriately. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have things that don't get put off till last minute and you procrastinate. It doesn't mean um, that you're not going to have to stay up late some. It just means that you're going to learn to make certain things a priority so that you can get them, them done. You're going to learn how to manage your time in order to accomplish all the tasks that you want to do there are things you have to give up in order to add things into your life. And so what are the most important things? For some people, they give up TV and video games and this, that, and the other. Other people tend to give up maybe other things because they enjoy those. And there's nothing wrong with that, but you are going to learn that throughout college. I, mean, I know I learned that very well throughout college. 
Um, finances are a big source of stress in college. Um, finances are rough because you are trying to set yourself up for a career to be successful. Um, some of you may work full time, uh, some of you may not, um, but you're trying to make money to, in order to be able to live, but also you're having to pay for this job of school. You pay for schooling and it's sometimes a job you pay to go to. Um, and that can be uh, definitely uh, rough in that scenario and trying to juggle all of those things. And then also your futures can be stressful. Um, the economy is doing good, but very easily takes downturns. Um, and it can be really hard to find a job and, and your job in particular. And if you've ever looked into job, jobs that you, you want um, and the requirements to get them, they always say they want a degree, they want education, and they want three to five years of experience. And you're like, well, how do I get the experience if I don't have the degree? And once you have the degree, you're like, well, I could never get experience until now. And so how do I do that? And so it can be frustrating and uh, concerning and these can add stress to your life. Um, your jobs can be stressful um, from maybe it's your boss who has unrealistic expectations or uh, just doesn't lead very well. Um, it could be coworkers that, that kind of get on your nerves and um, don't pull their weight and make it where you have to work harder. Or sometimes what it seems to be more than anything when it comes to your job and stress is if you have to deal with customers, um, dealing with customers, the motto is they're always right. Even when they're wrong, customers are right. And so dealing with those can be very stressful um, and having to, to meet their demands when sometimes their demands can't be met. Um, relationships can be stressful from significant relationships um, to those of your, your friends and your family and having to deal with all those while still dealing with college and jobs and everything else. And then finally, your environment may be stressful. Um, it can be stressful if it's too cold or too warm outside or, or in your house. Um, it may be stressful right now if you're um, trying to pay bills or, or other things like that. Um, but even everything in your environment can be stressful depending on what's going on. And it could surely be exactly where you live. Um, maybe there's a lot of traffic sounds and it stresses you out. That would stress me out. Um, I would be much happier in the woods and hearing a bunch of animals. But for some of you, if you went out into the woods and were hearing different animal sounds, that would stress you out. And so these are things that we have to look at when it comes to sources of stress and, and what can cause stress um, in our lives. And so since we, since we have that, you can kind of see that there are lots of things that can be a source of stress depending on who you are. Um, and so we need to talk about how do we deal with those things? Um, what are the things that we can, can do or what are some of the things that we can look at doing in order to um, manage our stress to reduce those levels? And so that's what we are moving into, to managing our stress and, and what's going to happen at that point.